everyone. Welcome to Just Read It. Uh, this is, we're here at the beautiful assisted living home at Laurelhurst Village in Portland, Oregon. Uh, my co-anchor, Susan, is here, and Don Merrill, who is a professional interviewer, is that correct? <laughs> Susan is a writer, of course, and uh, I guess I am too. Anyway, and today who are gonna... you? <laughs> what? what? Who are you? Oh, thank you. Caroline Miller. And I'm Susan Stoner. Okay, Susan Stoner. I know her so well. But um, <laughs> we're going to talk about other people's books today. And the one we're doing today right now is uh, Mitch Albom's The Timekeeper. It was on the bestseller list. And Mitch is Tuesday with Maury, as you probably know. And this is his latest book. And I think we'll start today with you, Susan. Okay. Um, so uh, the writer has written quite a number of books, and he's very well thought of. So I was really looking forward to reading this book, and I found it uh, like a fable, and I like that aspect of it. And he definitely is uh, a good writer, but. Um, Quite frankly, I don't understand why this was considered a very good book because, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's pretty much a cliché from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, I kept thinking that the movie It's a Wonderful Life actually did a better job of making the point. Uh, and, um, and some of it to me um, just seemed artificial, didn't make sense in terms of the the guy in the cave you know for eternity and I and just the characters and what happened with them I just was really disappointed in the book and I, I went on the internet and tried to see why people liked it and the only thing I can figure is the people that read it had never been exposed to the idea of your life makes a difference and I you know, it's just a puzzler to me. Well, for the audience who hasn't read it, it's, it's, it is a parable of a, a man who decides to measure time and angers the gods and gets tossed in a cave for several thousand years, is finally uh, allowed to go free, but he's got to save two other people to redeem his, his own life. All right, Don, what's your take on it? Well, I never really considered it being a fable. I mean, but now that you say that, I can see that it is. Um, I, I noticed how the, uh, the characters, their actions followed each other. The wife, Lorraine, was always waiting. Sarah was always waiting. Dora was always waiting. So I guess, I guess the whole point of the story was to show maybe in some way how we're all connected. But um, I spend a lot of my time reading news articles, and, and so I'm not really a big reader of fiction. Mm -hmm. And so for me, this was a treat because I don't often get a chance to stop doing what I'm doing normally and just sit down and read something for relaxation. And um, I enjoyed it for a couple of reasons. One, because it was short. <laughs> Two, because the language was simple. There wasn't a whole lot of things I had to take apart. Mm -hmm. And three, there were a lot of little aspects of the story that got my own attention and got me thinking about my own life. Mm -hmm. So maybe that was the author's point. I mean, it may have been cliche -ish, but maybe the point of the author was to get people to think about their own lives, get them to slow down a little bit. I mean, it's funny. It's a book about time. Mm -hmm. And here I am always rushed. Yes. And so I'm reading the book, and I'm realizing at the same time I'm reading it that, oh, maybe he's also referring to people like me who don't have time to do things like sit down and read a short, simple little book. Well, the task of the uh, central character is to save two people who want to kill themselves for, for, for different reasons. One is a teenage girl who is rebuffed and sees no point to her life and feels unattractive. The other is a, an old man who is dying of uh, cancer and he's, he's doing the opposite. He wants to get frozen so that he can perpetuate his life. And so you have these two takes on, on life and what we do with our lives in the time that we have. Uh, one wanting, the girl wanting to shorten it and the man wanting to lengthen it and the timekeeper having to somehow 
bring them to the same kind of resolution that they have worth. And I agree with you. He, I think, wasn't wasn't he a journalist? Uh, uh, I no, think no, Alvin no, no. was a journalist. I, I think he was a sports journalist. This is how he. Thought. So that does it involve his short, staccato kind of storytelling that I admit is easy to easy to read. I think it's important that um, it made you stop and think. Can you, you know, about your own life? Mm -hmm. can, can you tell, is there, was there something in the book that sort of started to trigger that response? Well, when he was talking about his relationship with his wife, Allie, mm -hmm. and then after Allie had passed away, mm -hmm. and he didn't have her anymore, I mean, he was always consumed with measuring. Mm -hmm. his water clocks, his sticks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. always measuring time. And uh, after Ali was gone, none of that stuff mattered to him anymore. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like you said, it is a cliche that you don't miss what you have until it's gone. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's a simple book. Like you said, it's a simple book. The messages have been replayed over and over and maybe done better ways in better places. But I'm not sure if you can ever hear those messages enough. That's a good point. Um, the... We all need a reason to live, and uh, some of us just stumble through life without questioning the reason. So the two characters that he has to save have to kind of reappraise why they're going on or not wanting to go on, and in the end, he learns uh, to reappraise his value and his system. It is a simple book in the sense that the characters don't really evolve, and you find them kind of formatted. Uh, and yet I, I did find it simple enough to, I had the same reaction, I kind of paused and, and, and gave it a thought, you know, well, well what is the meaning of time? And uh, what are we doing with it? And, right. I mean, I think of, Frank, like you said, uh, Frank Capra, It's a Wonderful Life, uh -huh. but also Orson Welles, and um, his story of uh, William Randolph Hearst. Oh, sure. Same kind of thing. I mean, you spend your life doing stuff that you think is important, and in the end, you realize it probably isn't that important. Yeah, really. you have that moment of epiphany, and you realize it's, it's something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. Or, you know, in the case of the young girl, it was that she didn't know how interconnected she was, and, and also what the loss of her in the world was going to be. So. You know, I think that's a that's an important message as well. It's too bad we all can't really see that for in our own lives. Yeah. Instead of guessing think, at it. Don't you think though that we have moments when we do? You know, you nothing's the same. So I think sometimes you have that realization, and then other time, then you forget it, especially if life overwhelms. And but well, you know. it's ironic that we all seem to get something out of this very simple little short book, you know. Uh, so maybe, maybe Alvin did a better job than maybe we might have initially credited him because it's almost so simple that uh, it, it certainly reads like a fable or, or a fairy tale, or a, a children's tale rather, uh, a, a fable, an Aesop's fable. Here's yeah. a story. So, so maybe there's more to it than, than the initial uh, I would. I, I sort of thought that I would like to read, since he's so well thought of, I would really like to read something else he wrote and see if he keeps in the same vein or does he do other things in other ways. Well, the jury is out on him. I mean, he, he has something to say, but okay, I guess we've run out of time. This little book has gotten us more, more comment than, than I anticipated. Now, uh, Don... Red is for recommending that the audience read it. Blue is skip it. All right, that, that, that was a cliffhanger. Susan? Blue? I'm going to go with red this time. Okay, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us, and uh, see you next time. <laughs>